IJ, uh, thank you for joining us here at the Life Center, uh, epicenter of where this traumatic and pathetic devastation has happened since yesterday. Now, if you look at that truck, be, uh, that escalator um, uh, 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 behind me from the Lagos State Rescue Unit, um, that's about the only um, machine working right now. And every hope or any hope of finding any more bodies or rescuing any more bodies appear dim at this point. It's all dark around here. All the electricity cables and power cables around here have come down. And so we don't expect to see any form of electricity or any beam of light as far as this place is concerned, maybe in a few days and in a few weeks. Uh, so we're making do with that light that you see there that's helping the rescue guys um, to see if they can. They're bringing, uh, bringing down. This is actually where the church chapel or the school chapel is to my left is where the hostel or the dining area of the the, the Bethlehem girls school where they were supposedly having um, early morning uh, breakfast when this uh, building came crashing down uh, that's the situation here we've had a lot of government official come up this 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 morning this afternoon late this evening all sympathizing with those who have lost um, 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 properties and loved, uh, loved ones interestingly the closest again we got to Something that appeared like this is it. People have lost their life. It's a young lady I spoke to earlier today. I did everything to persuade her to join us on the news at 10, but she's too um, devastated to join us. She's the young lady who will be getting married this Saturday um, in Lagos. Her fiancé, incidentally, is one of the family members that lost their lives here. If you remember yesterday, we told you there's a family of a father, mother, a son, and um, a house help that died as they were trying to make their way out of the house to church. Um, that young man was supposed to get married this weekend. And we were speaking earlier with the, um, the fiancé who came to actually say if this, was, if this was true or not, talking about one Miss Vera Okpara, ok ok and, and it, it, it's that devastating. She couldn't contain herself, IJ. Well, 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 just walk us back. I mean, our hearts do go out to, to, to that family for in that situation. Just walk us back through what you saw in terms of that rescue operation. I mean, there were so many stories coming out saying that it was difficult to access the area. What did you see there as a correspondent on the ground in terms of how that operation was able to be carried out? I will tell you that as far as the operations are concerned, this is one area we need to up our games as far as rescue operation is concerned. When things like this happen, the area and the scene is always filled with people, making it difficult um, in terms of evidence, making it difficult for um, rescue operations to really go on smoothly. It was a Herculean task for the officials um, today and yesterday trying to make sure that they can cordon off people. And it was difficult also because um, some uh, 200 meters behind me is the ever busier, big, popular trade fair market you call the Abspander. So this evening when they closed from market, a lot of them had to use this route just to catch a glimpse of what's happening. So that makes rescue effort very difficult and that's why um, I think these officials have decided to do that at night. But again, if they're doing this at night, they're only trying to bring down um, any shaky building and any building that has caved in. Any hope of actually rescuing anybody or getting more bodies is something, like I said earlier, that is very, very, very slim right now. And I think I think thirdly, government officials need to do a little more in terms of being able to coordinate uh, operations like this so that we know exact amount of people who have lost their lives, uh, properties. I know that that illumination should be going on by now, but with some people taken to hospitals, some wards who have come to take their loved ones away from this school, we can't really ascertain um, in terms of figures how many people have lost their life, especially from this student school. There's over 400 girls in this school, so that makes it a little more. So what, what we can appeal is that people come around come out and make um, us know or put down their names or put down um, those numbers if they are still looking for their loved ones because right now because of the number of devastated buildings around here it will be really really difficult to tell and this is just about the second or the third building that is being cleared there are over 50 60 houses that are yet to be cleared in terms of bringing them down to ground zero and that's really going to be difficult because we have beams of two-story building three-story building coming down to the to the to the ground floor and none of those those beams have been lifted. Um, we don't want to say that anybody's under those rubbles, but we just hope that nobody's under those rubbles because by now, uh, your guess is as good as mine because we are yet to really evacuate.